Why Angola falls the asset of Africa's richest woman, Isabel dos Santos? Hello, Desplorers! Welcome to another informative video presented to you by Desplorer. In this video, we'll look at why Angola falls Africa's richest woman's asset, Isabel dos Santos. To fully grasp this controversial problem, it is important that we do a little digging into the background of who Isabel dos Santos is, how she became Africa's richest woman, and why Angola is currently not pleased with the US dollar billionaire woman. If you are new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Background of Isabel dos Santos Isabel dos Santos, born 20th of April 1973, is an Angolan businesswoman, Africa's richest woman, and the eldest child of Angola's former president, Jose Eduardo dos Santos, who ruled the country from 1979 to 2017. In 2013, according to Forbes, her net worth had exceeded $2 billion, making her Africa's first female US dollar billionaire. Forbes described how Dos Santos acquired her wealth by taking stakes in companies doing business in Angola, suggesting that her wealth comes almost entirely from her family's power and connections. In November 2015, the BBC named Dos Santos as one of the 100 most influential women in the world. The Angolan government has since 2018 been trying to prosecute Isabel dos Santos for past corruption crimes that may have led to Angola's ongoing recession crisis. However, she remains in exile in Portugal. On 30th of December 2019, the Luanda Provincial Court ordered the freezing of dos Santos' Angolan bank account and the seizure of her stake in local companies, including Unitel and Banco do Fomento Angola. Dos Santos has characterized the charges against her as trumped-up charges, which are based on fabricated documents. She describes the seizures of her assets as a politically motivated attack. How true the charges against her are or how true her counter-accusations of her accusers are is a theory in progress. In the meantime, she is under investigation in Portugal and has since assumed the United Arab Emirates as her official country of residence. Two weeks later, the Angolan government announced it was preparing a legal battle for the confiscation of the Santos assets in Portugal, a process that is already in operation in the form of letters rogatory sent to Portugal to stop the transfer of funds from Portuguese commercial bank to a Russian bank. To date, one of the most famous things linked to the US dollar billionaire woman is a thing known as Luanda Leaks. How Isabel dos Santos amassed her wealth or the Wonder Lakes. On 19 January 2020, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists ICIG, published a detailed report on how Dos Santos amassed her wealth over the years. The report, which is called the Wonder Lakes, provides evidence of how she made a fortune at the expense of the Angolan people. The night of 22 January, just days after the leaks, her personal wealth manager and private banking director, Nuno Ribeiro da Cunha was found dead in the garage of his house, which set numerous conspiracy theories into play. When an Angolan court froze the assets of Isabel dos Santos, it was widely seen as the strongest signal of the country's president Joao Lourenço's intent on cracking down on ending corruption and decades of crony capitalism in the country. But for the 46-year-old Isabel dos Santos, the move is part of a concerted campaign to discredit what she often describes to journalists as the self-made success and hard work which made her a billionaire. Why her assets got frozen Despite cries of foul play by Dos Santos, the Angolan court finally froze the personal bank accounts of Dos Santos and her Congolese-born husband, Sindica de Colo, as well as Mario da Silva, chairman of Banco de Fomento Angola, in Angola, as well as their stakes in nine Angolan firms, Unitel, Angola's telecommunications giant, BFA, and smaller ventures, including the Candado supermarket chain, a cinema, and a mall. An Angolan court ordered the freeze in a bid to recover more than $1 billion of state funds that Ms. Dos Santos and Associates allegedly failed to repay. The freeze did not only affect Ms. Dos Santos' large share holdings in United Land Banco de Fomento Angola, but also adds to a dramatic fall from grace for the family of Jose Eduardo dos Santos, whose children dominated the economy of African second biggest oil producer when he was president. They rapidly lost influence after Mr. Lorenzo came to power in 2017. 
Although Mr. Lorenzo was Mr. Dos Santos' handpicked successor in the ruling people's movement for the liberation of Angola party, he swiftly turned against the former president's family after he became president. Ms. Dos Santos was removed from the helm of Sunangol, the state-owned company, and her brother Jose Filomeno Dos Santos lost control of the sovereign wealth fund. Ms. Dos Santos and her husband Sindica Docolo allegedly failed to retain the state funds and sought to send money abroad, according to government lawyers. Ms. Dos Santos and her husband whose downfall began when she was sacked as chair of Angola State Oil Company by Mr. Lorenzo in 2017 have always denied wrongdoing, suggesting there is a political vendetta against them. Mr. Dos Santos relinquished the MPLA's chairmanship last year, and as of 2020, new banknotes will no longer bear his visage as Angola's central bank recently announced. Isabel Dos Santos responds to her accusers. Shocked at the beginning of the year by the Luanda Leaks, the businesswoman is accusing the Angolan justice system of relying on false documents to freeze her assets in Angola and Portugal, a spectacular counter-attack as seen by many observers. In a statement published on Tuesday, 12 May 2020, she said the Angolan justice system used a forged passport in the case that led to the freezing of her assets. The announcement sent by a British public relations agency to several media including Juna Freak is the first public response by Isabel dos Santos in the arm wrestling between her, the Angolan authorities, and the current head of state, her father's successor, Joao Lorenzo. Surprisingly, as indicated in the press release, the forged passport in the name of Isabel dos Santos does not bear her signature, but that of Bruce Lee, the famous Kung Fu actor. It also notes an erroneous date of birth and an incorrect passport number. The press release also mentions forged emails that were allegedly used to attest Isabel dos Santos' willingness to make money transfers abroad. Isn't it now clear that the Angolan authorities' objective was to obtain emergency seizure of assets at any cost to prevent me from defending myself and causing the bankruptcy of the companies in which I invested and managed? asked Isabel dos Santos in her statement which also called on Portugal to take note of these new elements in order to release the assets seized in an irregular manner. She said she would use all the instruments of Angola and international law to fight the court order. Conclusion The controversial case is one of great perplex, as both sides of the aisle seem to have agenda of bias. On one end is the government of Angola, led by its new president, pushing to dethrone the former president's family in all aspects of the crowns they formerly were, while on the other end is a supposed self-entitled family which has single-handedly headed all the important aspects of the country, amassing a lot of wealth while the rest of the oil-rich country suffered in agony. What is so interesting is how much wealth Isabel dos Santos allegedly acquired thanks to her family influence, earning her the name Princess in Africa. The intentions of the government to recover its supposed wealth are noble, but if the use of fake documents is used to achieve this, then even if the country's alleged embezzled wealth of over a billion dollars is recovered, it will be a temporal solution, because the once famous family will not let that line down. A vigorous fight can prove fatal to the Angolan government, which is why due to diligence, must be ensured to get not only good results, but also one that can stand the test of genuity through the right methods. There you have it, Desplores. That is why Africa's richest women's assets were frozen. Thanks for watching this video, and if you did enjoy, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe and share with your friends.